It's time once again for that business show with Jamie Maloney on 1250 Wins WHNZ, where business becomes show business. Now, live in studio and promoting the entrepreneurial spirit that drives the American economy, your host, Jamie Maloney. Good morning, everybody. Thanks for tuning in on this wet Monday morning on That Business Show with Jamie Maloney, where business becomes show business. Keep in mind, this show airs every weekday morning at 8 a.m. here on 1250 WHNZ. And it's a show about business owners, entrepreneurs, political and community leaders, and people making a difference in and around the Tampa Bay and surrounding communities. As always, I invite you over to my website, tampabayradio.com. Over there, you'll notice a number of things. One, I sell real estate. So if you're in the market to sell your home, I do offer a free home valuation to all my listeners. Uh, just click on the uh, sell, your link, or sell your home link on the uh, homepage, and we'll get you over a, a free home valuation. Typically, 24 to 48 business hours. And also on the site, you can watch all the uh, past shows on on the man just click on the show info link um, on the uh, on the menu bar as well also please connect with me on all the different social networking sites you'll find me all over the place uh, my YouTube channel under uh, Jamie Maloney SoundCloud iTunes uh, and uh, so again pretty much all over the place with regard to uh, social media and please connect with me on all the different sites Twitter under uh, Jamie underscore Maloney please follow me there if you follow me I will follow you back and facebook.com forward slash that business show where we put up all the different guests coming in each and every morning as always, uh, two uh, g- guests in studio t- uh, with me today. Fortunately, uh, they made it in this morning, too, with all the wet weather out there. And uh, I'll tell you what, it's getting pretty nasty out there. We're down here in South Tampa on uh, Gandy, and it's uh, getting pretty uh, pretty brutal out there. Uh, the station actually has uh, closed the building today to all the salespeople and support staff. And uh, so just operational people are in here today and uh, people like myself who, uh, who are warriors out there that brave any weather condition and will get in here and get the job done. Grew up in West Virginia. I mean, I grew up with snow i grew up with sleet hail i mean this is nothing a little bit of rain as long as i can get through the roads i'm coming into the i'm coming into work so but uh if it's uh if you see any standing water out there don't be uh, as brave as i don't drive through it a lot of people uh i think lost their cars this weekend uh trying to uh, drive through some standing water so but uh let's uh waste no more time let me get on with my uh, first guest lisa garcia is the ceo of enterprise communication services based in tampa and this is her second venture as ceo in the it professional services market lisa founded one of the first successful telecommunication services firms in the United States with offices in both Seattle and Portland and is the author of a recently released book, Never Drink Coffee During a Business Meeting. Lisa, welcome to the show today. Thank you. Thanks so much. So first off, tell me a little bit more about your business background. Sure. Well, uh, I am a uh, IBM software engineer. And um, so that is what I started my career off when, as I was a junior in college, uh, recruited, basically did an internship for IBM and then and went to a company that IBM owned called Rome Telecommunications. Okay. So that put me into telecommunications and um, started off my career as a, as a design engineer. Okay. So now your new company here, Enterprise Communication Services, your second venture, how did this spin off of your initial uh, uh, business? Right. So I worked for IBM Rome that then became Siemens communications for about four and a half years, left the company, and within about six months got a call from my boss's boss saying, Lisa, can you come back as a consultant for us? So I was 27 years old, started that company, and after a couple of years, I grew to add employees, and a couple of years after that, grew to have offices in Portland and Seattle, brought that company to market about uh, a few years back, about four years back. Uh, but ran that company for about um, 17 years. So a young entrepreneur, age 27, taking over a a telecommunications company, correct? Really forming one. Or starting, I mean, yeah, not taking, I mean, yeah, forming one, right? Mm -hmm. So what was it like? I mean, to all the young entrepreneurs out there, give them some tips, give them some motivation for getting off the fence, uh, so to speak, and and starting that company. What what motivated you? What got you out of bed each morning and said, I'm going to do this? Well, it's really the same thing that does today, and that is that my days are different. Every day is different. Every week is different. Every client is different. Every challenge is different. And I've always been a person that um, rose up to it. And so it was uh, the way I started my company was was really not anything that I thought about. Like I said, I got a call and they said, will you come to work for us? But you have to decide within four hours and you have to be on a plane tomorrow to take over our Macy's account uh, because we're kicking it off. So my, you know, my gut is always, um, yes, yes, yes. And then figure out how to get there, right. And figure out how to do it. And so without knowing anything about running a business, I was 27 years old, um, and knowing all, all of what's encompassed with it, I said, sure, of course I would. So 
that's really um, what has, I, I believe, a lot of the reason that I'm very successful and that our company now that I founded, we're in our, our year and a half now point of ECS here based in Tampa, mm-hmm. um, what what we do now is the same thing. We're an IT professional services firm. We specialize, though, in Cisco technology in addition to Siemens and Unified Technology. But it's that idea that we get into the market and we um, take um, – take opportunities and then figure out how to make them Okay, happen. so you specialize now in IT-related services. So talk to me a little bit about your service offerings. Do you come into the businesses and kind of take care of their IT back end? But, and what type of different solutions do you provide business owners specifically with your company? Right, so specifically our clients are enterprise size. So we have a really less than a handful of big business that are our vendors. They will then um, provide the hardware services and actually get the contract the engagements with um, large size customers, and then they'll come to my team to say, all right, Lisa, we have this contract. We need to you to provide your professional services team, meaning you need to provide your PMP project manager, your Cisco software database engineer, your WebEx or on-site trainer, and then your help desk and day one and service support. Okay, so you are you doing strictly the hardware, or are you also doing the support and the software support as well? We're doing this. We're not doing really any hardware. We're doing the software. Okay, so services, it's just professional off. services. Okay. Yeah. And so, do you, are you the are you uh, getting calls for like virus and removals, things like that? Do you do that type of stuff, or is well, it more just database management, things of that nature? A little less of the virus. We're more voice over IP now, which is the migration from telecommunications okay. to voice over IP. So we're, you know, more voice, more voice, which is really voice and data, um, but more, more I hear related that term. To that. Explain that to me a little bit more. I hear that term a lot, voice over voice IP. Uh, explain that a little bit more to right. me, what that means. So, you know, when we started the company, my first company, which was called BIC, it was it was so different than it is now in terms of you'd have a telecommunications manager, you'd have a data communications manager. Usually they weren't always speaking the same language. They were in different areas in a corporation. They were on different floors. They reported to different people. It was really crazy. And it was just really a lot about the hardware and how those, those types of um, those servers were, were, were separated. So now that we are into um, now telecommunications has become voice over IP voice, internet um, over, over internet protocol. The voice data runs over the same as the computer data or your data network. So now your data communications manager is your voice is your is my um, contact. It is that same team. Your data communications team is the team that takes care of the voice and takes co- care of data, and it's all one. So the entire industry has changed, and um, voice engineers are now getting certifications that they would never normally want. Now they're getting CCNAs and people like me understand a lot more data than we ever needed to before in telecommunications. So it's entirely different technology. Okay. And so uh, I think you touched on briefly, but tell me a little bit more about how you've, what you've grown this company into today. I mean, what's the structure of the company? How many employees do you have now? Talk to me about the the success, so to speak, of your company. Sure. Thank you. So I had no idea that all I needed to do was stop my first company and start my second company. It'd be so much fun. And it is. The second time around is just a, a... so much um i'm so fulfilled by it and it's really i'm in a really wonderful place right now because what i've done is um with the second companies i've started to build from the top versus what i did previous is i would grow the employees to fill upper management i'm still doing that uh with our with our employees with our team but more so i'm i've hired vice president i hired a president in march and i've hired a divisional manager and i also have a director so, and these are people with strong backgrounds, um, women that I've known, and, and just um, incidentally, our firm is all female run, but growing in that area and putting that structure in place allows me to be CEO and, my, and have a single charter. And my single charter as CEO of ECS is to, is to gain vendor relationships. Mm-hmm. And um, I've used in my previous company, I was more still in operations, still in, you know, marketing efforts, still in those other areas. So I've really approached it differently. And I know that's based on the fact that I have 18 years of my previous company Mm -hmm. Um, as far as successes. And we're we're growing so fast. And although it's managed, it's managed growth. Who is your ideal client out there right now for people that are listening? Who is your ideal client? AT&T. Um, you know, Verizon very large is, enterprise. Verizon base, is yeah. one of our clients currently. Mm-hmm. Um, Unify is one of our clients. So it's very large enterprise. Cisco is a client that we're working for their distributors. I'd love to work for them directly. Mm-hmm. So it's very large 
large enterprise size clients. Okay. Now let's talk a little bit about your book. Uh, you've uh, recently released a book, Never Drink Coffee at a Business Meeting, correct? During a business During meeting. During a meeting, yes. a business meeting. So tell me a little bit about this book. Sure. Well, um, thank you for giving me time to talk about it today. Yes. It just I just picked them up last Wednesday. And just the, a funny little story is that um, you might notice it's a, it's a little bit smaller than you might normally think. Mm -hmm. um, and it's actually the wrong size. So I went to pick it up and I was excited oh, to so look the book, at it. Uh, the vendor got the, uh, the size <laughs> That's wrong. That's right. The formatting, the formatting inside the, um, the formatting inside the book is the right size. Uh -huh. And the um, book itself is a little too small. Yeah, we're putting that up on the, the uh, streamcast right now. I'm sorry right about now. that. Okay. Yeah, he's trying to guide you to put it I'm on sorry. the uh, Can We Do Stream All the Shows Here Live in Studio. So what's the content about in here? So the content, the main focus of the book is that it is, as I said, I ran a company for 18 years. And during that time, um, I've learned a lot. Obviously, we all learn a lot, right? And you learn from your successes. You learn from your failures. You learn from your team members. You learn um, through your career. But so the book has those items in it, but primarily as a business owner, we were always revamping our employee handbook. We were writing it. We were revamping it. We were adding sections. Well, there was quite a bit in my employee handbook that I wanted to put in that I really couldn't. So this is, are those tips. This is um, those items that I would uh, give advice on. So one of the items of advice is that I did don't never drink coffee during a business meeting. And there are a few reasons why. The primary reason... Because you got to go to the bathroom? Well, you would think that. But <laughs> I mean, that's my guess. I mean. <laughs> there's, a few, there's, a few, there's a few things in there. I'm not going to tell you for sure because I want you to read the book. I want you to pre-order right. on Amazon. But I will tell you the other part that's great about my book and makes it very interesting is that I have my client story. So, for instance, Starbucks headquarters was one of our clients. And so we worked there for quite a, um, you know, for, for a while. Mm -hmm. And so talk about our, our time there. And one of the fun things was is they had they trained my engineers to be baristas because there's barista stations on each floor within Starbucks. And um, we got so much work done. It was crazy. And you can see how fast I talk anyway. But can you imagine me with, you know, nothing but nonstop, nonstop lattes all day? <laughs> uh, it was fun. So there's field notes in the book under the chapters. And my, fav my favorite quotes, I'm very much a quote person. I'm a very much a visual person type of person see it make it happen uh, kind of kind of woman and um so it's those types of uh those now where's guys. the book available do you have this up on amazon and uh do you plan to have it in storefronts but for now where can people pick up a copy of the book thank you for asking it is it did get picked up by a publisher new york morgan james publishing um it is on amazon as pre-order and it will be in bookstores and available on march 1st um it will be in airport bookstores and uh, we're doing book signings across the U.S. all of March. So, so you can pre-order on Amazon today. There's some previews online for it. Um, and then we are actually, I am also doing a book signing at Working Women Tampa Bay State Conference on the 10th. Oh, the September 10th and yeah, 11th. Yeah, we September talked about that a number of times. The Working Women of Tampa Bay, a big uh, supporter of the show. But yeah, September 10th and 11th at the Straw Center, the Working Women Conference. Uh, let me take a quick break, but uh, coming back from the break, I want to talk a little bit more about your book and also a uh, um, foundation that you're involved in in the yes. uh, Tampa Bay uh, community. We currently talk with uh, Lisa Marie, and you can learn more about her at her website, lisamariegarcia.com, and follow her at Lisa Garcia CEO on Twitter. You're currently listening to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney, where business becomes show business. Bud Spriggs and Movement Mortgage want you to experience the thrill of one-day underwriting and the comfort in knowing your loans will be clear to close in record time. While a competition looks to a lost closing date, Bud Spriggs and Movement Mortgage focus on their 12-day clear to close. They do this by utilizing their world-class operations staff to underwrite your loan within six hours, process your loan in 12 days, and have your loan closed in time. Underwritten in six hours, cleared to close in 12 days. Bud Spriggs and Movement Mortgage. Are you in need of new flooring or ready to tackle that home remodeling project? Then contact Jaeger & Company Incorporated, a family-owned, state-certified general contracting business with over 70 years of experience and the recipient of the Angie's List Super Service Award for the last eight years in multiple categories. Jaeger & Company comes to you with their Shop at Home Flooring Sales Service and their hardwood flooring refinishing is the very best in the Bay. Kitchen and bath design featuring American-made, well-born cabinets. And all work is done by employees, not subcontractors. Learn more at JaegerFlooring.com. Tampa Bay weather is a roof killer. That's why when getting your roof done, you want it done right. Hi, I'm Jamie Maloney of That Business Show. 
When considering a new roof or repair, talk to Westfall Roofing. They've been installing high-quality roofs in Tampa Bay for over 25 years. Get a free, no-obligation estimate by calling 855-99-ROOFING. That's 855-99-ROOFING. Find out what already 15,000 satisfied customers already know. Call now, 855-99-ROOFING. Are you looking for a local real estate firm that knows the market and has your interests in mind? Then contact Jim McPeak at McPeak Real Estate Firm, a family-owned business whose agents have over 60-plus years of experience in the Tampa Bay market. Many of the agents are military veterans that know the VA process for buying a home and are proud to help our military members in any way they can. From residential to commercial real estate, McPeak Real Estate Firm is here to help. Contact Jim at 813-495-3875 and learn more at mcpeakteam.com. Have you considered a reverse mortgage as part of your retirement financial plan? For homeowners age 62 or older, a reverse mortgage from Access Reverse Mortgage is a safe economical way to turn your home's equity into cash or monthly income. Access Reverse Mortgage is a family-owned company based right here in the Tampa Bay area for the past 10 years. They are A-plus rated by the Better Business Bureau and Florida's leading reverse mortgage provider. Call 727-347-0305 or go to accessreverse.com to start your research today. NMLS number 4566. That's 727 347 0305. Hey there, it's Lynn Wise, the founder of Wise Business Advisors and Contractor Business Alliance. I am a certified value builder advisor and I help business owners build a company that will allow them to have the business that they dreamed of when they started. Why did you go into business for yourself? I'm sure it was not to work 100 hours a week with no work-life balance and no financial freedom. What am I talking about? I'm talking about building a business that provides value to you and your family now and in the future. You can learn about the eight essential areas of a business that you must build to have a business that can be an asset for your future. Go to wisebusinessadvisors.com and take the Value Builder score. It is free and will deliver your score immediately on how you are doing on building a valuable business for you and your family. Or call me at 772-834-8513 to learn more about the Value Builder system. From the Bright House Networks Traffic Center. Flooding in Clearwater causing big problems on Gulf to Bay and the intersection with the Bayside Bridge and McMullen Booth. Avoid that area if you can. Howard Franklin Bridge jammed from the St. Pete side all the way into Tampa. North and southbound 75 jammed approaching I-4. Selman Crosstown, it's jammed from 75 to 50th Street. And State Road 56, both directions near 75, very slow. See traffic problems? Call the injury firm of Abraham's son and New York Hillsborough Traffic Tip Line, 866-545-9595. This report is brought to you by iHeartMedia. At iHeartMedia, we harness the power of sound in a way that can help you expand your reach to a new group of target customers and grow your business through customized and effective advertising. Call 844-BY-RADIO or go to iHeartMedia.com. Flood warning in effect for western Pasco County until 11.45 this morning. A flood watch for the coastal counties until 8 this evening. A 70% chance of rain during the day, high 86. You're listening to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney on 1250 Winds WHNC. Once again, here's your host, Jamie Maloney. Welcome back to the show, everybody. Thanks for staying tuned in. You're listening to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney, where business becomes show business again each weekday morning at 8 a.m. here on 1250 WHNZ. And learn more about the show over at tampabayradio.com. Currently talk with Aliza Marie about um, her company, uh, Enterprise Communication Services. Also her uh, book, Never Drink Coffee During a Business Meeting. But you're also involved in a uh, foundation that you wanted to talk about a little bit, Little Light of Mine uh, Foundation. What is this uh, foundation all about? Thank you. Um, Yes, I'm on the board of directors for LLOM. It's a foundation, a nonprofit foundation that's founded in St. Petersburg by our founder, Sherry Kendrick. What we provide is photography services to terminally ill children. Um, It started with Sherry's passion. She's a professional photographer for many years and actually has a business in St. Petersburg. Um, And how it started was uh, she developed a relationship with the local hospital and they would call her and let her know that they have so many children in their wing that are um, possibly uh, not going to be here much longer. So she would go in to the hospital and take these amazing photographs and wherever possible, you know, uh, camouflage or remove what the children might be connected to. Um, and then she would uh, edit the photos and just take a slew of them, you know, with family members and all of that. And then she provides, and what we provide through the foundation is the disc 
of all the photos, all edited, all gorgeous photos that people can put up uh, in their home, and we just provide that to the families. How long has this uh, foundation been in existence, and what's the history, or how did this come about? Right, so the foundation, it's been Sherry's passion for many, many years, and it's something she was just doing on her own. A foundation officially started in mid-2014. So it's uh, the timing is right for me, too, because I've got this new business that's about uh, founded around the same uh, time. We started in January of 2014 and the foundation, and I'm bringing my business acumen to help uh, organize it. We've got already an amazing group of volunteers. Um, we've done a lot of work already, but it's uh, you know fairly new. We've got our gala coming up. Mm-hmm. So we're, our gala and our launch is actually going to be on the 19th of November in St. Pete's at Nova 535. Mm-hmm. And... Um, it's just amazing. You, would, you wouldn't believe the testimonials that we get from these families because, of course, when something like that's happening, that's the last thing the family is thinking about is getting some photos to, to remember from, and especially photos of, of this quality. It's, um, it's such an amazing, amazing foundation. So you spread yourself pretty Love thin. It. You're the CEO of Enterprise Communication Services. You just wrote a book, Never Drink Coffee, during a business meeting. You're involved in the foundation, a Little Light of Mine, and you're the mother of two, correct? I am. I'm the mother of two amazing daughters. Um, I hate to say it, but they're going to be fourth and fifth graders. Uh-huh. I think I was just a mom last week, but um, <laughs> uh, I go to Cambridge Christian School. But you know what I do is I make sure um, that I'm spending my time exactly how I want to, and I make sure that I have balance um, and and somehow I'm doing that. I always ask people <laughs> that I always ask people that are you know just so involved in so many different things. How do you stay inspired? What's your secret? I know I've got my secrets, but you know what is? How do you stay inspired? Well, I mean, for sure, I stay inspired because of my relationship with Jesus. No question. Mm-hmm. Um, that's it. And then, like I said, my da- my my daughters. My goodness, I mean, they are my main inspiration. They give me my energy. They feed my soul. They feed me with love, and I hope I feed it right back to them. But um, I just I've in my point of life right now, I I make a conscious decision what to fill my days with, what to fill my thoughts with, what to focus my energy on. And and I do that. And I and I do that a a lot of times with prayer, helping me with prayer to say, keep me focused. And in fact, a couple of months ago, I heard someone say something about uh, a Christian person saying on Christian radio saying, you know, take what out of my hands, what's not of you. And I do. And I pray that. And so it's really this. It's really that same thing with my business clients, um, ways we're growing in the company. Yeah. You know, you have a conscious decision. Do you grow to something that might be the low hanging fruit? It's maybe not your long term, or do you consciously say, you know, we're not going to do that, even though it might be easy. That's not keeping us on the road for our long term growth. So it's it's very conscious these very days. Very good, for me. very good story, and I'm sure that's their uh, inspirational point of many people's lives, uh, their relationship with uh, Jesus and the Lord and everything. So I appreciate you sharing that story, a great little story, and definitely uh, you know something that other people should take heed of out there in the community. Uh, let's talk. Uh, still got about a minute left or so. Uh, you're planning another book though called Higher Friends. <laughs> Come on, tell me a little bit about this. What's this going to be about? Right. So I I never thought it. You know, after I did the first book, I said, okay, it's great. It's been a wonderful experience. I love it. Um, it's 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 turned out to be it's exceeded my expectations on what's come from it. But uh, everyone said, you know, once you do one, you're going to do another one. Well, of course, we've already got four chapters together, at least in draft or at least on paper. Mm-hmm. Uh, and one of the chapters is about hiring your friends, which I know goes contrary to what everyone tells you. Don't hire friends. Don't hire relatives. Well, I've got a little bit something to say about that. And I have some experience with that. Good and bad. Um, so, again, just a lot about uh, the same sort of type of book. It's really, you know, for my employees and people on my team, there's no reason to reinvent the wheel, right? And there's no reason to to make the same mistakes twice. So my book really is like that. And the second book would be the same idea. It's like, I've done it. I've learned it. I've learned it the hard way. Um, Learn from me. And um, I have a passion. How soon before that one's released? Oh, who knows? (laughs) You're asking (laughs) the good questions. I got to get this one. uh, I got to get this one released in bookstores first. Well, hey, Thanks, great accomplishment, uh, not only being the CEO of a company, but also releasing a book and another one on the horizon. Lisa Marie, thank you very much uh, for being in studio today. Great conversation. Thank you, Jamie, so much. And you can learn more about her at her website, lisamariegarcia.com. You're currently listening to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney, where business becomes show business. Hi, welcome to Yeagers. We just want to take a minute and show you what we're all about. Uh, at Yeagers, our primary business is hardwood flooring although we are remodelers for kitchen, bath, and general construction. We operate a fleet of shop-at-home vans that have all the flooring-type products, hardwood flooring, laminate flooring, tiles, stone, what have you. So we're able to come out first with products in our vehicles and take a look at the setting, how the colors will work, 
and then to be able to come up with some options and ideas for you. If that's not good enough, we have a large distribution center that we inventory product and have a nice display area. Chipped or cracked, we'll buy it back. Auto Glass America, 813 96 Glass. That's 813 96 G L A S S. From the Bright House Networks Traffic Center. Flooding in Clearwater causing big problems on Gulf to Bay and the intersection with the Bayside Bridge and McMullen Booth. Avoid that area if you can. Howard Franklin Bridge jammed from the St. Pete side all the way into Tampa. North and southbound 75 jammed approaching I 4. Selman Crosstown, it's jammed from 75 to 50th Street. And State Road 56, both directions near 75, very slow. See traffic problems? Call the injury firm of Abraham Son and Newdirk Hillsborough Traffic Tip Line, 866-545-9595. This report is brought to you by the American Association for Cancer Research. The American Association for Cancer Research is the world's first and largest organization dedicated to finding cures through research. Please support cancer research by donating today at www.aacrfoundation.org. 1250 Winds Weather Center forecast should see partly sunny skies today with the high reaching upper 80s near 90 degrees, 50 percent chance scattered showers and storms and the overnight low in the upper 70s. Impact Radio 1250 Winds WHNZ. You're listening to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney on 1250 Winds WHNZ. Once again, here's your host, Jamie Maloney. Welcome back to the show, everybody. You're listening to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney, where business becomes show business on this early, wet Monday morning. I hope people out there are uh, getting to work, or I think, uh, I think a number of people are probably staying home today. I know the building down here on Gandhi, uh, the iHeart Media building, uh, they've uh, closed the building to the uh, support uh, staff and uh, people that don't need to be in here this morning. And uh, flood warnings all over. I was just uh, listening uh, to the, you know, the break there and hearing all the uh, evacuation orders up there in Pasco County. So quite a mess out there on uh, the roadways and stuff today. So yeah, if you don't need to be out on the roadways, uh, definitely want to stay out of South Tampa today. It's going to be a nasty day down here. So time to bring on my next guest for the show. Laura Webb began her career in the insurance industry in 2001 as a workers' comp claim adjuster with Liberty Mutual. During her tenure with Liberty Mutual, she worked closely with such high-profile clients as UPS, IBM, Kohl's, and Icon Office Solutions. She founded Webb Insurance Group in 2004 and today is known for its customer service, loyalty, and superior offerings. She's in studio today, though, to talk about the Entrepreneurs Organization. So excited to hear about that today. Laura, how are you doing today? Great. Thank you. Dodging raindrops, as you said. Yeah, so. and you're, a, you're an insurance specialist, and i got to ask you, I mean, you probably must hate this type of weather out there because this is when your phone starts ringing, right? Yeah, unfortunately, and um, this definitely... You know, claims are, are, are not fun by they're any part means. Of the business, so they though, are part yeah, of the business. I mean, they're not fun for the people that are having to go through them. So, I mean, we're glad that we're here to be able to fi- help them financially. But, you know, I'm sure they would appreciate not having to deal with it if at all possible. Did you have any uh, issues getting in today? Where did you drive in from this morning? I came in from Hyde Park. So, okay, did you hit any you water? Still, you came in around um, 730 or I did. So. It was early. No, I was fortunate to beat it, but I don't know what it's going to be like getting out of here. So we'll see what happens afterwards. Yeah, I, I drive in from uh, Lutz every morning, and I always come down uh, Florida Avenue into Tampa, Tampa Street down through uh, downtown, and I hit some I hit some water on Florida uh, coming down through uh, the central parts of Tampa. And yeah. uh, you know, one thing I was thinking though over the weekend, you saw these uh, stalled cars, um, you know, on the roadways, and people obviously willingly drove into those uh, ponds of water. Uh, insurance standpoint, is that insurable? Is that claimable? 
It is. Um, as long as you have that comprehensive coverage on your policy, is, um, which is the same thing that covers your windshield or if your car catches on fire or somebody breaks into it, flooding is included. Okay. Um, even if you willingly do it, <laughs> we don't have an automatic like exclusion for, I mean, being able to just drive through and see if your insurance will cover it. I was having covered. that conversation <laughs> and it just by chance that uh, you were scheduled to come in this morning. So actually, yeah, I was, I was having that conversation with somebody this weekend. And they're like, I don't know. I mean, because you're willingly driving through the water. So in, from an insurance standpoint, it's like, listen, you did that. All right. You should have known better than drive through that water, but uh, right. destroy your engine block. But uh, so it is insurable uh, as long as you have the uh, the full coverage uh, on the cars and everything. Right. Obviously subject to the deductible and things along those right. lines. But um, it is. It, it will Do you get a lot of those calls in, in this uh, time of the year with the people driving through the water? Or you know, no? I'll be honest. I've been in business for 11 years, and this is the first time that we've had any sort of um, we've had flood claims and cars mm-hmm. before, but I've already started to get some emails this weekend over flood claims in the homes, which you yeah. know, is people in Tampa, we, we feel like we're invincible and, you know, it's never going to come here. But obviously this is proof that we are, we're, we're not completely <laughs> away, right. away, you know, subject to, we are still subject to weather. Yeah. So, okay. um, but we'll see what happens. And, and, and unfortunately it sounds like it's still not going to be done. We've got a couple more days of this coming. No, so a couple more be, days. You know, the most important thing yeah. is just to be safe though. Um, you know, like you said, those standing water, try and avoid them if at all possible. Obviously people have to go to work and things like that. Yeah. But, and it hits so quick too. I mean, you're just driving around next to, you exactly. know, 10 minutes later, you're, you're stranded somewhere. So, and of course we all think, uh, oh, that's not going to happen to me. And we go to drive through right. the water but and, uh, no need to go out and take pictures. You can see them all on the internet. The news <laughs> right. is taking care of that for us. Absolutely. So only go out if you absolutely have to, or if you're evacuated, like you said, make sure to be safe. Entrepreneurs organization, uh, the focus of uh, the interview uh, now, uh, what is the entrepreneurs organization about? So we're actually a local chapter of a global organization. Um, we have over 11,000 members, um, in more than 70 different countries around the world. So, so um, it's an offered opportunity for entrepreneurs to come together and learn and grow from one another. Um, we are not a networking organization. We have a strict no solicitation policy. So really the purpose of it is to be able to just share experiences of um, how we've grown our business and how others have grown their business so that we can learn from one another. Okay, so, so I'm, I'm hearing like a support group, uh, so to speak, then? I guess for, I, I think I've heard people refer to it as a mastermind sort of okay. a group. So um, it, it's definitely, it, it's ways, it's, you know, sharing ideas ideas about how to grow or if you've come across a situation in business, obviously HR seems to be a hot topic um, from time to time with different employees, but account payable situation, mergers and acquisitions, if you're looking to sell, um, different things along those lines that you can really learn from other people that have been through it in the past. So okay. why try and reinvent the wheel when there's other entrepreneurs that ha- might have shared that same Okay, situation? so the Tampa chapter is a local chapter. This is a national uh, organization. International, right? Inter- yes. International. Mm-hmm. The website eonetwork.org. How did it get set up in Tampa then? What, who's behind it and how long has it been around in Tampa? Right. So Kevin Harrington, who's been on the Shark Tank, is actually one of yeah. the original um, founders of the organization in general. And then likewise, the local chapter as well. Um, it's really, we've kind of rebirthed, if you will, in the last couple of years. So we are a growing chapter of the international organization. Um, some of our members include Joey Redner from um, Cigar City Brewing yep. and um, Nick Friedman from Hunks Hauling Junks. So we have some local um, people that have been really involved. And then Joey Redner's the son of Joe Redner, right? He is yeah, correct. yeah. You don't yeah. hear much from Joe Redner anymore. The father. We used to hear from him about ten years ago all the time. All the local. time, right? Yeah, yeah. His son's a little quieter. So, so, but yeah, I hadn't heard that name in a while. So, but but I, he's doing great. He's mm-hmm. expanding into. I mean, the whole. You know, Definitely the southeast, and I think even more on a national level as well. So Mm -hmm. they're blowing up. So he has the opportunity. You know, there's other brewers within the organization on a national level, and so they have an opportunity to really get together and talk about what's working for them, what's not. You know, there's different laws and and things like that in every single state that maybe somebody who has a brewery or who is already distributing in Oregon, and he knows all the idiosyncrasies of what's going on out there, and so he can share that with Joey. Joey can approach him about, hey, I'm looking to grow out there. Can you tell me any hiccups? or anything that I need to be aware of before I actually expand. Okay, is this a, so is there a membership fee for this or how does the how does this work for the members and people involved? There is a membership fee. There's an annual fee. There's an initiation fee for, on both the global and the local level. And then there's an annual membership fee as well on the global and local level. And um, we do go through interviews through um, with the board. So it's a mutually exclu- uh, you know interview type of a situation. So we obviously buy one, want to make sure that we have people that share our core values and share our, our mission, our vision and things like that. So that it is, because it, it is more than just working on your business itself. We refer to it as EO360. So we talk about it being having an impact on your business and on your 
personal life and on your family and how they all work together. Because obviously, or typically with entrepreneurs, they work so much that maybe, you know, there's not that balance part of it. So we really work on being on the entrepreneur as a whole. Is so. there a planned meetings for the group? Is there different events and or uh, get togethers, things like that? How does how does that work? Right. So within the organization itself, if starting on the local, the, the number one value that people say they get out of their membership is the forum experience, which the forum is six to eight members getting together on once a month in a confidential setting where, um, you know, you can truly do all of your experience share, do monthly updates, what's been going on, what's coming up, um, and then from move on to, you know, share, do a presentation, if you will, about one particular topic that might be a hot topic that month or something that's been nagging them over the last couple of months that really it's time to really address this and say, okay, how do we want to handle it? So those are once a month. And then also the chapter has learning events that, you know, we get together and we talk about, um, different we have different speakers that come in we have an economist coming in in january to talk about just state of the union right now sort of mm -hmm. a thing but we also try and again going back to that eo360 allow there to be value for the entrepreneur for his or her organization as well so we have a negotiation workshop that's coming up at the end of august and also we have a sales training coming up in november both where the, um, the entrepreneur or the member is invited to bring in their sales staff and actually they can be developed as well um, likewise in the past we've had a uh, employment defense attorney come in so HR directors were invited to come in and learn from them as well. Um, we've had other people that have talked about uh, the accountants, you know, just different ways that you can be um, about taxes and all of the mm -hmm. things that you just don't want to have to talk about, but you know you need to. Right. Those learning events allow that opportunity for you to have to address some of the things that maybe as you know, your day-to-day -day operations, you're not really addressing or, or you know, focusing on. You, you have an opportunity to come in, sit down, and learn on a regular basis. How so. large is the local chapter members, roughly? How large? How local chapter is about 30 members, and um, so we're looking to grow from there. Okay, and so people come in, and it's not just a we-take-anybody type of mentality. So you come in, and then you interview, and so it's a, a mutually, uh, you know, inclusive agreement, so to speak. You've got to take me. I've got to, you know, want to join you as well so and then it forms this mastermind where people can come and then kind of bounce ideas off of one another learn from other people peers within their their organization is there a certain field right now where you need people specifically you mentioned that you had you know uh, joey redner from cigar city brewery uh but uh, and some other people defense attorneys accountants is there something lacking what what fields are you lacking right now that you need some membership in i mean again because it's on a networking organization it's not necessarily that we're lacking any particular area okay. the requirements of membership is that you have a, a million dollars in annual revenue um and then again you you follow the core values of you know trust and respect boldly go cool make a mark and thirst for learning so and just really embracing the opportunity to grow not only yourself but within um, okay so you have to have the million dollars in annual, annual is that just gross revenue or is that net adjusted revenue nope that's gross revenue gross so, revenue right. gross sales mm -hmm. okay and, and then, then you have to be a majority owner or founding partner of your organization so basically we kind of refer to it as that excuse me, you're not able to be fired. Mm -hmm. So if, if you're able to lose your position within the organization, then you're not eligible for membership. With okay, you. and it's subject to annual reviews then, obviously. Correct, if we that, do that's do an annual the, verification. Okay, so that right there definitely sets people apart right there. If you've got a million dollars in, in gross uh, sales, uh, you're definitely doing something something right in the area. Exactly. You know? So, I mean, right there alone, if you're in that category, this is obviously is a great mastermind group then because a lot of other organizations, I mean, anybody can go into them you know, with lesser standards, so to speak, not, not knocking those organizations. They definitely have their place. But if you want to be among the elite, obviously, the uh, entrepreneurs organization is, uh, you know, <laughs> definitely one of them if you've got a million dollars in, in sales. Absolutely. And it just brings about different experiences that you're able to share when you're first starting. And, you know, you uh, asked me earlier about the accelerator program. And that actually is we don't have a local chapter, but on the global level, the accelerator program is for those businesses that are not yet at a million, but are on their way to getting there. So it's almost an incubator, if you will, of, um, of those sorts of businesses that are not quite to that point point but then they have the opportunity to grow yeah i'm again so. i'm over on the website eonetwork.org and i'm yeah the programs there you just mentioned the accelerator i see you have a mentorship program uh where i guess you know somebody within the industry kind of takes somebody under the wing and then mentors them you know uh, tell me a little bit more about uh, is there other programs or is the accelerator and the mentorship uh, kind of the key programs within the uh organization those are the programs i would say that we do really focus on that thirst for learning um value as well in that we've got annual um 
um, regional conferences. This upcoming year, it's going to be in Nashville. Um, and I know that Dave Ramsey is coming to speak. And, you know, I'm, I'm really curious to see what he's going to talk about, if he's going to talk about how he developed his brand or if he's going to truly talk about his Dave Ramsey program. Because, you know, a lot of times, you know, with that other boldly go core value, entrepreneurs just go, you know, all the way. And so maybe sometimes I need to take some time and, and review their finances as well. So I'm interested to hear him. Um, last year at, in Philadelphia at our regional conference, uh, we had Gary Vaynerchuk come and speak, who's remarkable. Um, he has a podcast as well that I try and listen to on a pretty regular basis, but really um, doesn't hold back on the marketing piece of it. So um, I think we really want to go for that. That part of it, the thirst for learning, um, is really what we're looking for as far as that goes. How's the uh, entrepreneurial landscape? I myself, you know, I'm doing this show because I really think it's a movement in the Tampa region and to be able to come in here each and every morning and meet, you know, professionals such as mm-hmm. yourselves and the entrepreneurs out there, I really think it's a movement in the Tampa region and really across the nation. We're hearing more and more about the entrepreneur every single day. Uh, what is your view of the uh, entrepreneurial landscape in Tampa right now? Oh, I think we're definitely, we've, we're providing um, opportunities as far as, um, there's a lot of there are quite a few incubators in town that seem to be um, growing and growing at a rapid rate. So um, and again, taking them from that, you know, just starting off into the the bigger, you know, acquiring more employees, acquiring more sales, and and again because now we that we have Amazon from the distributor distribution standpoint, mm-hmm. we have an opportunity to really grow from that. But um, I think Tampa's definitely on the map as far as, you know, place that it needs to go for. Right. A lot of excitement, a lot of stuff going on. Uh, Downtown development. Very exciting. I've had a number of people in here talking about that. And, you know, the Channel Side District, I mean, that's going to do wonders for the downtown uh, community. So very excited to be a part of that. But, yeah, just so many people doing so many things in Tampa. Just a great uh, community to be uh, uh, growing up in right now. Actually, I'm growing up. I'm aging in, I should, so to speak, now. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Got to take a quick break. Currently talking with uh, Laura Webb. She's the president of Webb Insurance Group. Uh, We're talking talking specifically about the Entrepreneurs Organization, and you can learn more about uh, the organization at eonetwork.org. You're currently listening to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney, where business becomes show business. Are you in need of new flooring or ready to tackle that home remodeling project? Then contact Jaeger & Company Incorporated, a family-owned, state-certified general contracting business with over 70 years of experience and the recipient of the Angie's List Super Service Award for the last eight years in multiple categories. Jaeger & Company comes to you with their shop-at-home flooring sales service, and their hardwood flooring refinishing is the very best in the Bay. Kitchen and bath design featuring American-made, well-born cabinets, and all work is done by employees, not subcontractors. Learn more at JaegerFlooring.com. Bud Spriggs and Movement Mortgage want you to experience the thrill of one-day underwriting and the comfort in knowing your loans will be clear to close in record time. While a competition looks to a lost closing date, Bud Spriggs and Movement Mortgage focus on their 12-day clear to close. They do this by utilizing their world-class operations staff to underwrite your loan within six hours, process your loan in 12 days, and have your loan closed in time. Underwritten in six hours, cleared to close in 12 days. Bud Spriggs and Movement Mortgage. Tampa Bay weather is a roof killer. That's why when getting your roof done, you want it done right. Hi, I'm Jamie Maloney of That Business Show. When considering a new roof or repair, talk to Westfall Roofing. They've been installing high-quality roofs in Tampa Bay for over 25 years. Get a free, no-obligation estimate by calling 855-99-ROOFING. That's 855-99-ROOFING. Find out what already 15,000 satisfied customers already know. Call now, 855-99-ROOFING. Are you looking for a local real estate firm that knows the market and has your interests in mind? Then contact Jim McPeak at McPeak Real Estate Firm, a family-owned business whose agents have over 60-plus years of experience in the Tampa Bay market. Many of the agents are military veterans that know the VA process for buying a home and are proud to help our military members in any way they can. From residential to commercial real estate, McPeak Real Estate Firm is here to help. Contact Jim at 813-495-3875 and learn more at mcpeakteam.com. Hey there, it's Lynn Wise, the founder of Wise Business Advisors and Contractor Business Alliance. I'm a certified value builder advisor, and I help business owners build a company that will allow them to have the business that they dreamed of when they started. Why did you go into business for yourself? I'm sure it was not to work 100 hours a week with no work-life balance and no financial freedom. What am I talking about? I'm talking about building a business that provides value to you and your family now and in the future. You can learn about the eight essential areas of a business that you must build to have a business that can be an asset for your future. Go to wisebusinessadvisors.com and take the Value Builder score. 
It is free and will deliver your score immediately on how you are doing on building a valuable business for you and your family. Or call me at 772-834-8513 to learn more about the Value Builder system. Have you considered a reverse mortgage as part of your retirement financial plan? For homeowners age 62 or older, a reverse mortgage from Access Reverse Mortgage is a safe economical way to turn your home's equity into cash or monthly income. Access Reverse Mortgage is a family-owned company based right here in the Tampa Bay area for the past 10 years. They are A-plus rated by the Better Business Bureau and Florida's leading reverse mortgage provider. Call 727-347-0305 or go to accessreverse.com to start your research today. NMLS number 4566. That's 727 347 0305. From the Bright House Networks Traffic Center. Big delays on the westbound side of the Crosstown Expressway into downtown Tampa. Northbound I 75, slow from 301 to Interstate 4. Southbound 275, slow from Fowler into downtown. Also, the Veterans Expressway, very slow from Ehrlich to Hillsboro. Howard Franklin Bridge, it's jammed from St. Petersburg into Tampa. And the Gandy Bridge, also seeing very slow traffic approaching West Shore. See traffic problems? Call the injury firm of Abraham's son and Uteric Hillsboro traffic tip line, 866 545 9595. This report is brought to you by Unbound. Poverty doesn't discriminate. It feeds on the forgotten. At Unbound, they believe in the collective wisdom of society's oldest and most vulnerable members. Providing sponsorship for the elderly is just one way Unbound is different. Learn more at unbound.org. Flood warning in effect for western Pasco County until 1145 this morning. A flood watch for the coastal counties until 8 this evening. A 70% chance of rain during the day, high 86. You're listening to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney on 1250 Winds WHNC. Once again, here's your host, Jamie Maloney. Welcome back to the show, everybody. You're listening to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney, where business becomes show business each weekday morning at 8 a.m. here on 1250 WHNZ. And as always, learn more about the show over at tampabayradio.com. Also, uh, please connect with me on a different social networking sites to keep up to date with all these shows on demand as well as upcoming guests. Facebook.com forward slash That Business Show. We put up all the uh, show recaps there as well as a, uh, the upcoming guests. Uh, usually get that up by uh, midday so you can keep uh, up to date with who's coming in each and every morning over there and also over on tampabayradio.com on the uh, main page uh, on Sundays. I put up the uh, guests that are coming through uh, throughout the week. Currently talk with uh, Laura Webb. She's with the uh, Webb Insurance Group, but uh, she's in the uh, studio today talking about the, the Entrepreneurs Organization. But, Laura, you're also very involved in the community in a number of other ways. You mentioned uh, the Girl Scouts, uh, uh, women's uh, group as well. But talk to me about some other ways that you're involved in the community. Um, well, like as you said, the Girl Scouts is probably is the one thing that I'm most passionate about right now, um, being on the board and fund development chair. But really, you know, it's interesting is how the Girl Scouts, the cookie program is such an entrepreneurial program. And it gets girls to really start thinking about financial literacy from an early age. And so because they have to budget, so they have to, just, and first of all, they have to set goals. What do we want to raise money for? What do we want to do with the money at the end of the day? So, right. they, so we've got goal setting and then we've got budgeting and then we've got sales and marketing, obviously, um, I mean, including including all of the posters and the, yeah. the tables that they set up at Publix or anything along those lines. Um, and so from that standpoint, it's, it's, it's it's an opportunity for them to really, it takes it, the lemonade stand to a whole new level. So, <laughs> What time of the year do those Girl Scout cookies come around again? When is that? It's, That's, seen, it's in February. It's in February? Yeah, okay. Yeah, All right. Yeah. I, know I, so, I know it's a certain time every year. I couldn't remember when. So it's a, it comes back around and then next uh, February. So it's just once a year? It is. Okay. Yeah. So but they have other, um, actually, um, Tampa was one of the pilot programs for their snack program um, that they are doing in the fall. So I think they were selling bars and, and things along those lines just to kind of try it out from the from the. Um, national level. So. Yeah, the Girl Scout cookies. I love those things. And I always feel guilty not buying a box from one of the Girl Scouts <laughs> and they come around. So that alone, you know, helps the sales as well. Us men who uh, feel guilty if we don't buy them as well as the women out there as well. But uh, so uh, what was the other organization that you mentioned? A women's uh, a group? Or? Well, you said earlier with Lisa Marie that you know, Working Women of Tampa Bay. Oh, okay, you're involved with Working Women. Oh, okay, someone. Yeah. I've just started. I've just learned about them. So it's really a great organization. It is. So and actually, even within Entrepreneurs Organization, as you can imagine, it's been fairly male base for a, a while and so now i mean there's actually a, a group that have gotten together and we had a um our, we have a global leadership conference every year that brings all of the boards for all of the different chapters together and, and again it just supports that core value of thirst for learning and this past year at the um 
event in San Diego, we had a, a, a luncheon of just women and just to kind of talk about how do we want to continue to develop and how do we want to continue to promote women as entrepreneurs and support each other. So there's definitely the movement as far as that goes to to allow each other to grow and, and to really seek and recruit other women as well to be a part of the entrepreneurs organization so that we can see, you know, all entrepreneurs grow and succeed. Yeah, the so. Working uh, Women of Tampa Bay CEO and founder Jessica Rovelli, they're in here every uh, Wednesday. Jessica always uh, checks in at the top of the hour. But, yeah, they've been a great supporter of the show. And, uh, yeah, we mentioned with uh, Lisa in that uh, first segment, uh, they, uh, she's involved with them too. So a lot of people are involved in that organization. It's growing it's, for sure. It is. It's a great uh, organization for the working women out there in the uh, Tampa community. Uh, definitely uh, something that you need to look at. WorkingWomenOfTampaBay.com uh, is their website and the conference that's coming up uh, September 10th and 11th uh, at the Straws Center. We talked about that each and every uh, Wednesday, but that's going to be, I was at the event last year and there was a lot of booze, a lot of people mm-hmm. there and just a great uh, uh, event to be at. And actually, uh, listeners can even get a discount off of the event if they use the uh, promo code Maloney2015, a nice little uh, gesture, gesture from uh, Jessica over at the Working Women of Tampa Bay group to uh, get a discount at 10% off the tickets. Uh, go over to workingwomenconference.com to pick up those tickets. But uh, let's circle back around. we got a couple minutes left, though. I want to touch on a little bit more on the uh, entrepreneurs organization. Now, your role within the organization is president, correct? I am at the local chapter. And yeah. again, you got to have a million dollars in annual sales to uh, you know have membership into this Be group. Be eligible, yes. And it's like mm-hmm. a mastermind of uh, just entrepreneurial professionals. What's some of the key, what's one or two of the key traits of the people that you work with i mean what's you know what gets people to that level where they're generating over a million dollars in sales so if you if you have to kind of sum up some of the traits of you know the people that you work with in tampa what is it about them that sets them apart from all the other entrepreneurs i think um you know first and foremost would be some sort of a vision like where where's the end point where what is it that you want to get to yes we want to get on the road and we want to start going but you've got to figure out like where that destination is at least the first one of course once we reach that destination very often we set another one or and mm-hmm. continue to go beyond that but you know if you don't have that vision in mind and it's just you're just kind of floundering through or what have you or, or struggling because um just for lack of vision then i think that's probably um that's so having a clear a and defined vision of Absolutely. what they want to do. And then a strategic plan on how to get there. So, I mean, we come together as a board every year and do a strategic plan on how we want to grow the organization um, as well as, you know, having a, then you can use that skill and implement it into your agency or your business or what have you and have that strategic plan as well to get to that ultimate vision or that goal or that destination. What so, about the uh, stick to of it and the uh, prior failures, things like that? Do you see a lot of people that just keep, that keep on going no matter what? I think that's oh, kind of sure. the, the backbone of the entrepreneur. Entrepreneurs, they just don't give up. They, they are the most resilient individuals you have they ever met. Failure. In your, <laughs> yeah, and they just, accept failure. Yeah, they accept failure as a learning well. experience again. So, and, and again, that's that opportunity to be able to share that failure or what have you is exactly, you know, the person that's just transparent and comfortable talking about past experiences is really an opportunity. Well, and people can learn more about this uh, organization at eonetwork.org. Laura, got to wrap this one up, but uh, real quick, what's the best way people can get some information if they want to join the uh, entrepreneurs organization? Uh, contact I, you? They can, absolutely. Okay, okay. what's the uh, best way to contact you? Uh, um, phone or email? Probably phone. My office would be great. 813 887 Five five three one. Say that you're on the. You heard me on the show. I've got some really great gatekeepers. So making sure you recognize Jamie's name in this show would be great. All right, sounds good. Thanks, Laura. Again, eight one three eight eight seven. 5531. Well, it's back to work on this early uh, Monday morning and a wet Monday morning at that. You've been listening to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney, where business becomes show business. 